visiting us at the <coughs> Gowanus Canal. My name is Hans Hesselein. I work for the Gowanus Canal Conservancy. This is the salt lot. Some of you have been here before. Um, and this is where our organization uh, operates our composting program. Uh, we have a nursery here. In fact, we store all of our tools and materials that we use for volunteer programs. Um, a bit about our organization. We're uh, a nonprofit. We're Brooklyn based and we focus on the Gowanus Canal and its watershed. And we're trying to bring more <coughs> environmental sustainability initiatives to this particular area. Uh, the Gowanus Canal watershed is about 1,800 acres, about 150,000 people live within it. Um, we're within New York City's combined sewer district, and one of the main focuses of our, of our uh, organization is trying to work on reducing the amount of combined sewer overflows that enter the canal every year. Are most people here familiar with the term combined sewer system and what it means to have combined sewer overflows? Explain it. Explain it, please. So in, in New York City, uh, like many old cities, Boston, Philadelphia, uh, we have a combined sewer system, meaning that our stormwater and our sewage are conveyed in the same pipes. Um, before we understood about issues of water quality and uh, aquatic health, uh, it made a lot of sense to just sort of sweep our sewage out to sea, let it sort of trickle downhill into uh, rivers and let it be washed away. That seemed like a great way to get rid of it. Uh, in fact, uh, sewage is bad for our water, and um, we started building our cities with combined sewer systems. So the sewers would just run downhill, they were gravity fed, and stormwater, whenever it would rain, would kind of flush them and wash everything out. Uh, nowadays, when we build new towns and cities, we build separated sewer systems, so all of our sewage can go to wastewater treatment plants, and our stormwater can get some minimal treatment and be released directly to creeks, streams, and rivers. Uh, in, uh, because of our co combined sewer system and the amount of impervious surfaces within this watershed or really any watershed in New York City, whenever it rains even as little as a quarter inch of water, that immediately translates into millions of gallons of storm water that enter our sewer system. Our sewage treatment plants and our pipes just can't handle that volume uh, of water, of flow, and so there's an emergency overflow system that allows combined sewage and stormwater to be released into places like the Gowanus Canal. Otherwise, the sewers would back up and our basements and our streets would flood with sewage, which would be even less pleasant than, than polluting the organisms that live in places like the Gowanus Canal, or don't live in the Gowanus Canal. Uh, the Gowanus Canal receives approximately 300 million gallons of combined sewage every year. And so uh, the primary focus of our organization is to to expand green space and to promote projects that help to trap and treat stormwater. Urban farms happen to be one of the great uh, green infrastructure systems that we can implement, which also have, of course, other maybe primary functions of providing people with food, uh, recreation, etc. But for us, uh, what's really attractive about urban agriculture and rooftop farms is the amount of stormwater that they can absorb and keep out of the sewer system and hopefully reduce or eliminate combined sewer overflows at one point in the future. That's why one of the reasons we really welcome urban agriculture within our watershed. Um, our organization and our connection to urban agriculture, uh, which will hopefully be strengthened as time goes on, is, is probably through our composting program. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that Eric Martig isn't here to explain it to you. Maybe some of you know Eric Martig. He works at Grow NYC. He's Mr. Compost. Uh, as a volunteer, he has developed and operates our compost program. We started out a year and a half ago uh, with Eric and a bicycle trailer and 10 five-gallon buckets. And he was running trips between coffee shops and a couple of restaurants and a CSA and bringing food scraps down here to compost in a series of wooden bins. You can see them on the other side of the shipping container and outside the salt lot. We were doing bin composting, and each one was approximately a cubic yard. And we probably, we probably composted, I don't know, maybe 20 or maybe 15 yards of compost during that first year, and everything had been carried by him on a bicycle. Uh, later on, as uh, we developed relationships with Grow NYC, and they started expanding their green market food collection program, um, and trying to find places within New York City to compost it, whereas before they had been sending it down to Delaware, which I think has the East Coast's largest composting facility. I've never seen it. It's supposed to be amazing. But Grow NYC started trying to send their food scraps to uh, local 
composting initiatives. And um, once every four weeks, we receive a load of food scraps, which are collected from four Brooklyn green markets. And it's almost always between 8,000 and 9,000 pounds of food scraps. Uh, this year, we've composted 40 tons of food waste, uh, combined with another 20 tons or so of uh, brown materials, which we get from leaf uh, collection points during the fall, and also all of the weeds and organic debris that we uh, pull from um, vacant lots and, and garden spaces around the canal, which we then uh, chip and shred and add as the brown material for our composting program. Um, so in all this year, I think we've made about 80 yards of compost, about half of, half of which you see over there is going to get disposed of, unfortunately. Uh, during Hurricane Sandy last week, we were under about this much water, um, and all of our compost was exposed to contamination, everything from salt water from the Gowanus Canal, which is connected to the Hudson Bay and the Atlantic Ocean, to the pathogens uh, and microorganisms that were released during the combined sewer overflow events. And also, uh, what, what's most concerning is what may have been kicked up from the canal sediments uh, during the storm. For those of you that aren't familiar, the Gowanus Canal is a Superfund site, meaning that it's one of our nation's most polluted bodies of water. Uh, it, along with the Newtown Creek, have the, the distinguished honor of being New York State's two uh, water bodies with the lowest permissible water quality designation, meaning that the dissolved oxygen levels and the turbidity in the water are so, oxygen so low and turbidity so high, that uh, it's, it's barely habitable for uh, marine organisms, definitely no oysters. We have a few mussels, um, but it's really a challenged uh, body of water. Um, so in addition to sort of our combined sewer uh, stormwater management goals, we also are trying to build public open space around the Gowanus Canal uh, and also expand wildlife habitat. Um, we uh, do a lot of guerrilla gardening projects at street ends. Uh, there are a lot of abandoned street ends that tend to serve as dumping grounds for uh, contractors and homeowners. People just come down to these areas which aren't very well monitored and just dump their trash. And what a lot of the projects that we engage in with community members are turning those uh, vacant, trashy spaces into attractive wildlife gardens and uh, public areas along the edge of the canal. It, at some point, I would encourage you to walk beyond those buses. There's a really beautiful street end garden that's kind of uh, one of the projects we're proudest of that we built two years ago with like 120 volunteers one day uh, who came out here in September to build that uh, garden. Um, we've been expanding our programs over the years. Um, we do everything from building birdhouses and bat houses, building gardens, as I've mentioned, composting. Uh, we launch floating gardens once every year in the Gowanus Canal. We try to create really creative, uh, fun, and meaningful volunteer projects for people to engage in. So people, we let people work with power tools, of course gardening tools and hand tools, and uh, we try to design and develop projects that both offer information and education to people, but are also really uh, sort of create an impact in some small but meaningful way around the Gowanus Canal. Um, we have, uh, over the past three years, we've worked with almost 1,500 volunteers who have contributed more than 6,000 hours of service to our projects around the Gowanus Canal. One wonderful thing about working um, a, a nonprofit organization or sort of a community-oriented green program in New York City is that there is no lack of labor, and uh, as long as you're a uh, decent community organizer, you treat your volunteers well, you give them interesting tasks that they feel engaged in and ownership about, there is no lack of people that are willing to help you out and provide uh, their, their labor, but also their uh, whatever other resources they can contribute. And we've made a lot of wonderful partnerships with a lot of amazing community members uh, that way. Um, right here is sort of what's left of our nursery. We've started this past year doing our own prop propagation program. So we do we do seed collection from native seed populations around New York City, and we germinate those seeds and then pop them up into larger containers and then install them in landscapes around the canal. We also do cuttings, you know, tissue cuttings, and we'll root, uh, you know, cactus, uh, yucca, 
uh, willows and um, dogwoods and various other things that we will root the cuttings directly, pot them up and grow them around the canal, which is a really great educational resource for people, but also it allows us to sort of begin to collect and expand the native gene bank of uh, native plants around the New York metro area. Um, you can see some of what's left it's looking pretty shabby right now, but it'll be much more attractive in the spring when things start to leaf out again. Uh, we also have a lot of trees here from New York Restoration Project and the uh, tree giveaway that we worked on with them a couple of weeks ago, uh, which was a really rewarding program. Um, so, What is your challenge of a community who are interested to participate in a farm hat capacity? Oh, right. So we are really... Uh, our composting program is fabulous, but we have a huge bottleneck in it. We use a lot of wood chips as a bulking agent to give it structure and also allow oxygen to uh, allow more oxygen within the piles as they cure. But all the wood chips uh, end up making it a, a really coarse, heavy compost product, and we really, really, really need to be able to sift our compost so that we can separate the fines from the coarse materials and then recirculate those into the composting process. Uh, we're desperate for some sort of trommel or sifting device. I hear rumor that uh, there are folks who have developed some sort of human-powered trommel and we're very excited to try that out. But uh, leaf shredders, I know that you guys have developed one last year. I saw it in operation a couple of weeks ago. I was very impressed and look forward to seeing uh, a, a, a trommel. If there was any way for shredding coarse leaves and small sticks through human power, that would be amazing. Although, it seems like a bit of a dream. Well, it but, could also be a motor. Oh, or a motor. Okay, yeah, we can use shredders and sifters. That's what we're really desperate for. What do you do with the compost? So, we use it primarily for uh, gardens around the canal. The as you may know, our urban soils are really depleted. It's mostly construction debris, uh, coal ash, and other forms of fill. And so they're really nutrient poor and usually uh, fairly acidic and contaminated. We amend uh, all of the urban soils within our gardens with copious amounts of compost, which really helps to restore the soil food web and make the, the soils much more viable for establishing native plant communities. We, use it, uh, we do a lot of street tree maintenance and stewardship. We always add compost to our street tree pits. We also work in parks and we're trying to sell some of the compost also uh, at an affordable price to help generate revenue to hire a staff member really to manage the program. That's one of our next steps uh, is to bring somebody on board full time. And we would really, at some, once there are farms down here, we would love to be providing compost to those farms to help uh, re generate more soil <coughs> for growing plants. I guess you sort of just answered this, but to what extent are your agricultural products focused on like bioremediation? To what extent are our agricultural products? Uh, I would guess very little. I think, well, I don't know, but I imagine that there are, if you're talking about bioremediation, you're talking about addressing contamination issues. I think you generally probably don't want food and decontamination associated with one another, although. I think there are some forms of mycoculture and mushroom farming where you can turn um, certain, definitely hydrocarbons into more benign sugars and other uh, whatever. What about uh, the gardens that you float? What's that? What about the floating gardens? So the floating gardens, not an agricultural project, but the floating what? gardens uh, was a project that we installed this past summer and the summer before that, where it was really a kind of. Uh, more of a community art project than anything, but the plants that we installed and the mussels that we were encouraging to grow on these floating gardens, uh, the objective was to do something fun and engaging with community members that also could, was exploring issues of, of water filtration, although we certainly didn't expect our small floating gardens project to have a meaningful impact on the waters in the Gowanus Canal, but it was meant to sort of make people aware of the fact that there are natural systems that can help to process and treat uh, contaminated water. Um, 